we discussed the Ramadan in the special month, and I guess all of us, alhamdulillah, inshallah, already know that. It is a special month for so many different reasons. It is a month which is sent out to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can attain taqwa. And it is a month when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends all the previous books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent for Ali Karim for Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today's topic is not very sweet one because most of the time you know, we just want to hear from a khatib or from a person or from whoever is talking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman and Rahim, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just going to give us the nothing. And we just keep doing whatever we keep doing. We look at today what is happening. And I'm not scared to mention the names, right? Whatever the Bani Israel, whatever the Israel is doing to Palestine, they think that they were the chosen ones. They were the chosen ones, right? And that is the unfortunately thing that Muslims today are gonna not gonna but they already have it in them that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman and Rahim, Allah is gonna forgive us, so we keep doing whatever, and then at the time of our death, inshallah we'll say la ilaha illallah, because when we say la ilaha illallah at the time of the death, inshallah we'll go to Jannah. Let's just take a take a look here and let's look at our routine, our life, and ask ourselves, are we living the life of according to la ilaha illallah? And inshallah, my intention is not to hurt you or your feelings. It is to just express my ego and inshallah your ego as well. And inshallah talk about Quran. And then the way out of all of this is Quran. Quran is the guide, Quran is the warner, Quran is the lawyer. This lawyer will be for you or against you on the day of judgment, and inshallah we'll go through in the details. It could be my last Jumma today, it could be your last Jumma today. It could be my last Ramadan, it could be your last Ramadan. Have you ever thought about that? My mother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her. I mean, she was with me last year, but this year she's not with me. And alhamdulillah, for that as well, it was the time. Imam al-Bukhari is famous for the Sahih Bukhari, but he also wrote another book. And the name for that is Al-Adat al-Mufrad. And there's a hadith about Abu Hurairah there that says, Muhammad ibn Sirin said, we were with Abu Huraira one night and he said, oh Allah, forgive Abu Huraira and his mother and whoever asked for forgiveness for both of them. So Muhammad ibn Sirin said, we used to ask for forgiveness for them so that we would be included in Abu Huraira's supplications. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Abu Huraira be forgiven, may his mother be forgiven, may I be forgiven, may my mother be forgiven, my father be forgiven, all of you forgiven, inshallah. In the last few weeks, I went to Bunurong Memorial Park twice, you know, not for fun, but for two janazas. The first one was a 21-year-old person. You know, 21 is such a great age, right? That we're all in our youth and we think we have all the power and you know, what not. And the brother, in the life in the region, he took his own life. SubhanAllah, we live in a country which is non-Muslim. Or even Muslim countries. We are so separated from each other as Muslims. You know, Quran says, in al Mu'minun right? And hadith, we know that a Muslim are like a Muslim, and a Muslim and Salam of Insani we are But today, what we have done, we just think that we just do five of us. We, you know, people like me, rock a big beard, you know, wear white clothes, wear this kind of, you know, hat, and we just feel like, oh, we'll be forgiven. And we just feel like, I'll do my Siyam, I'll do my Zagat, I'll do one Hajj, but I will not care who lives next to me. I will not care who is in my family who I have not spoken with for the last as many years. Who is a Muslim brother that I fought with him, he fought with me. And since then the ego came into me and came into him, saying that I'm not gonna talk to him, I'm right, he's wrong. SubhanAllah, we, we, we have come far away from Quran. If you die today, and I'm asking this to myself as well, are you ready to face Subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, I'm not ready. And I pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you guys are. And inshallah, I will try and you try as well. Let's set some ground rules talking about today's talk, right? Talking about Quran. We all believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabbul Alami. But let's read Quran, what Quran says about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, al Fatiha everybody knows, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will be shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki. 
and this, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sustainer for all the, you know, jahan, all the alameen, all this world, whatever we know, whatever we don't know. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself. When a non-Muslim asks you, who is your Allah? Can you introduce me to, you know, your Allah? Give the introduction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's introduction is, even though all the praise and gratitude is for him, he's the owner and the sustainer of all the alameen. But who is he? He's Rahman and Rahim. Yes, that is the fundamental, you know, ground rule that we're going to discuss today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is standing in Rahman and Rahim. But let's continue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Imran, ayah number 109, that says, Whatever is, you know, is in the heavens or uh, in, on the earth, everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, matters will be determined, everything will be determined on this way as well. And in Surah Taha, ayah number 6, that says, Lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ad, wa ma baynahuma wa ma taht al to him belongs whatever is in the heavens, whatever is on the earth, and whatever is in between, and whatever is underground. So this is, I'm, I'm bringing these ayahs to myself and to you, just to set the ground rule that you and I are nothing. Whatever we are given is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the, the malik's or all the you know, presidents or the prime ministers today, they think that they have all the power, but no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power. And we also know in Surah Zuma, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu khaliqu kulli shayi wa wa'ayat kulli shayi wa bil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all the things and he's guardian over all the things he's watching. And this watching is not for nothing. Because Quran says again and again, inshallah one day we have to return to him. So if we return to him, all of the questions will be asked, how did you, you know, live your life? So now we have said the ground rule that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner, is the Lord, is Rahman and Rahim. Now let's go to you know, the next thing that is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Quran says us that, so, who do we think, whose kalam is the best? Is it your kalam, my kalam, or some other ABC? No, we just set the first ground rule that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best, He's the creator, He's the Lord. Of course, His kalam is the best as well. His kalam is Quran, Burkan, al kitab that has been sent down to us, but unfortunately, as I mentioned last time as well, in my culture at least, you know, we put it on top of the shelf, we just pick it up, we just hug it, we kiss it, we put, touch it to our, you know, to do to our, you know, to our chest, and we feel like, uh, uh, you know, it's just going to magically translate to our hearts. No, it's not going to do that. There are, there are some efforts that, that we need to do. So let's set some ground rules about Quran as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after Fatiha, uh, in Bakara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with, Alif la'am mim talik al kitabu la ra'i bakim, kudem lil mutakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this book, there's no doubt about it. So it has two meanings. First, Allah says that the first meaning is definitely this is the book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And second is, whatever this book says, this is perfect. There's, there's no nuts in it. Many non-Muslims would come and say, oh look, this talks about this, this talks about that. But no, we as Muslims, we believe that this is the book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there's no aib in it. It is perfect. And it says, within the look again, that, you know, it's guidance for Muttaqeen or people who have taqwa. So who are people? Who are those people? And inshallah, you read Surah Al-Baqarah's continuous ayat, and you will know that they pray, they give charity, they believe in Quran, they believe in all the books before, and all that. Inshallah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in Surah Al-Takbir, Ayat number twenty-seven says, "In wa'illa bi'kubul al-alamin." Surely this Quran is only a reminder to alamin. Again, we think it is our world, but there's a world of unseen as well. There are jinn who are Muslim, alhamdulillah, for their you know world and all the worlds. So this. Quran is reminder to all of those words. And then in Surah Al Habka, Surah 69, Ayah number 43, Allah says, Tanzilum mir The Quran is a message sent down from the Lord of the words. And also, now many Muslims feel like, oh, just like me, Arabic is not my first language. So how am I going to understand Quran? SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again in the Quran mentions that this Quran has come down to you in you know easiest Arabic. So even if Arabic is not your language, try to read it. And as we started this chat today by saying, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who guides. When he wants to guide somebody, he will guide him out of nowhere, right? And then that person will start understanding Arabic. And Quran, you will notice, inshallah, that there's so many ayat that are repeated, that are, the message is repeated. Even as a non-Arab person, you just look at those words and, you know, they, they stay in your mind. Next time, when, inshallah, in Tarawi, you know, the Imams are reading Quran, we are saying, like, you know, the death and dumb, inshallah, not. 
But when they read the ayat, we see, oh, this ayat was mentioned, you know, two uh, rakat before as well. What does it mean? And inshallah, it should try to intrigue you so that when you go home, or when tomorrow you're going to come, or tonight when you're going to go to Tarawih, you know, imams are going to read which surah, which para. You try to read it, and try to read it with the translation, with the tafsir as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah al kamar says, وَلَكَدْ جِسْتَنَ الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذِكْرِ فَعَلْمِ الْمُتَّقِينَ And we have certainly made the Qur'an easy to remember. And also, Mufassirun say, easy to understand as well. So is there anyone who will be mindful? Is there anyone who will take the message from it? Is there anyone who will read it and will cry? Is there anyone who will read it and think that, you know, Jannah is not easy for me? Is, is there anyone who will just read the ayat of punishment and then remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking for forgiveness? And look at the video of Surah Ar-Rahman, right? The starting wording, they're so beautiful. Ar-Rahman, Allah al-Qur'an, Khalaq al-Insan, Allah al bayan And then you will see the sequence of the ayat, right? Ar-Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, you know, introduce himself as, you know, Jabbar, Kahat, and all that. But look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Allah is talking about the most merciful. And then he's not saying Khalaq al-Insan. He's saying Allah al-Qur'an. What Muhammad al also again say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran also mentions that Humans think that their creation is the most difficult thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done. Allah says, no, look at that, art, samawat, art and samawat, look at all things around you. Your creation is not so difficult, and we created you for the first time, inshallah, we'll create you again as well. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the Rahman, the biggest of his mercy, he taught us Quran, and he created us, and then he taught us how to talk about Quran as well. So if any of you sitting here feel like, oh, I don't have good communication skills, or I cannot understand Quran, or I cannot go and talk about it, no. These I have contradict with whatever your feeling is. Shaitan will come to you and say that you're nothing, you do not know Arabic, it's not your first language, but, but what my message to you today is, read Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that it is easy to understand, it is easy to remember, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you, ta'alam al bayan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us how to, you know, taught us how to talk, how to talk about Quran. So inshallah, try, try that as well. So that was the second message. Third message is, Quran tells us, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told, you know, us, you know, guided all the ummah to Quran, right? Quran tells us that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his life was a practical implementation of the Quran. His life was a practical implementation of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Ahzab, ayah number 21 says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْبَتْنُ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Surely there was a good example for you, excellent example for you in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for all those who look forward to Allah, meeting Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on the Day of Judgment in a good way inshallah when we see Him inshallah and He will love us and the last day and remember Allah much Now, ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Here, Mufassir will also say that remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala means reading Quran. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means reading the adkar that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us about it, his sunnah. So Allah is great, he is the owner, he sent Quran, that's a mercy for us, then he sent a messenger, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Anbiya tells us, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ الْعَالَمِينَ And we have sent to your Prophet only as a mercy for the whole, you know, alameen, all universal, multiversal, whatever is there. And also in Surah Tawbah, Ayah number 21, 128, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, There has certainly come to you a messenger from among yourselves, who is very, you know, often grievous to him in what you suffer, like uh, concerns over your guidance and to the believers, is that is very kind and merciful. So, Rasulullah used to cry all night, right? Can you believe the Imam al -Ambiya? The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that closes to him, that he would cry. Not for him, because he did not make, make any sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already forgave him, but he cried for us, for our guidance. Look at yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Quran says, Ya You save yourself and your families. And I'm, I'm not saying it to you, I'm saying it to myself as well. How much effort am I? or you are putting not only to understand Quran first by yourself, but also then teach your family and your friends. SubhanAllah, when we go in a gathering, everybody's talking about property, cars, sports, footy, this and that, right? And when we start talking about Quran, people feel like, look at this guy. You know, now he's going to teach us? I am Arab. You know, I know Quran is in my language. I understand it fully. And the next time, they don't want to meet you. 
It's all right. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took somebody out from your life. If they don't want to meet you, that was not important to you. But a message I'm trying to convey is that read Quran, understand Quran, try to teach yourself, try to teach your family because you're responsible for your family as well, inshallah. Quickly going forward, who is our biggest enemy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in Quran that Shaitan is our biggest enemy, Iblis is our biggest enemy. He and his family sees us from places where we cannot see them. The jinn, right? In Jannah, it comes from the root which is hidden. Like Jannah, Jannah is hitting us hidden as well, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked, uh, told us in Quran when the time when Adam Islam was created, and uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked for the angels to prostrate. And angels asked the question, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the great, you are the Hakim, but we want to understand why you're creating this new creation. And we think he will go and he will do fatah on earth. But the Shaitan, he was all the way quiet. He did not say anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to, you know, prostrate Adam. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish him. So what he says, he says, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me time until the day of judgment. Not for repentance, not for doing anything good, but he says in uh, Surah Al Araf, Allah bimala, Allah fabimala awaitani, la kudanna lahum siratak al mustaqim. So because he blames Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mistake. He says, because you have deluded me, I'll most surely, you know, destroy them or make them go astray on from your straight path. And he says, in Surah he just said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me the time until the day of judgment, so that what I before I did, he want to make us go astray. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats the same thing in Quran again and again. So in Surah al hijr ayah number 39, it is mentioned in a different way. It says, Shaitan was telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, Rabbi bima awaitani, la usayyinanna lahum fil ardi wa la ubiyyannahum ajma'in. He says, uh, he said, my Lord, since you have deluded me, I will most surely make the world beautiful for them. And uh, I will most surely delude them all or make them go astray or make them, you know, ignore you, that's it. And look at ourselves. We are so lost in this dunya, right? It's all about nine, nine to five job. It's all about earning millions. It's all about that mortgage that we bought from a delivery company, right? And it's all about buying the next car that I want to have. It's all about the holidays that I want to go and I want to take my family to. But have we really thought about the permanent holiday, inshallah, that we're going to go to? That permanent holiday could be a torment, or that could be a joy. A joy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in Quran again and again. Especially this uh, next ayah is very important for us to understand that what did Shaitan do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Adam alayhi salam, don't go near that tree for whatever reason. It was the Sharia of Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give the whole Quran to Adam alayhi salam. Allah just said, don't go near that tree. And what did Shaitan do? Shaitan made them go astray and you know they went with that tree and they ate from that tree. And what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Araf, Ayah number 22, is telling us, فَدَلَّهُمَّ بِغُرُورٍ فَلَمَّا ذَاكَ الشَّجَرَ لَبَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَمْآتُهُمَا وَتَفِقَا يَقْصِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَكِ الْجَنَّةِ وَنَادَاهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا أَلَمْ أَنْتُمْ أَلَمْ أَنْهَكُمَا عَنْ تِلْكَ تِلْكُمَا الشَّجَرَةِ وَأَقُلْ لَكُمَا إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمَا when Shaitan lured them with lies, they, you know, their nakedness became visible. And then they started to find the, you know, leaves from the, from the tree to cover themselves. We look around, you know, look around our sisters, our mothers, and even our, our brothers as well. We don't want to cover ourselves, because look, there is, you go on YouTube, you go here and there, just debate, is the job mandatory, is the job not mandatory, is it important, is it not important? SubhanAllah, like read Quran, and I'm not even mentioning many other ayat that give direct order. This is what Shaitan did to our father and mother. And we should be careful. Shaitan is our biggest enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the wording says, um, Allah says, did I not prepare to burn that tree? And the next thing Allah says, did I not warn you that Satan was your sworn enemy? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us. And that reminder, inshallah, if you try to read it again and again, then we will be, inshallah, learning the ways how to protect ourselves from shaitan and from his wiki Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives direct order in Surah al nur that don't follow shaitan. The time is very short, inshallah, I want to go through a few more things. I'll quickly go uh, with those. Quran says his life is short, right? All of the life of Adam alayhi salam until the last human being, they are part of day. So look at ourselves, what we are doing. The most important thing from today's message that I want to share with you, there's a Sahih uh, Hadith in Muslim 2.23. It says, 
والقرآن حجة لك أو عليك القرآن will argue for you or against you سبحان الله when you are stuck in a big case right when your case is in, in front of a judge you would want to have the best lawyer possible Quran is the best lawyer possible subhanallah it is not only telling you that it can argue for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you it can go against you as well it might say not for us inshallah for the Muslims inshallah not for us may Allah forgive us it will say that these people they had this they had me even some of them studied me and some of them became half it but they did not understand what I said but even if they understood they did not give the light according to the rules Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he wrote in me that these people knew and also in Surah al Sukhruf uh, I number 44 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us wa innahu la dhikru laka wa al-qawmi wa sawfa tus'alamun surely the Quran is a glory for you and your people and you will all be questioned about it on the day of judgment subhanallah I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the guidance to read Quran, to understand it, and to teach my family and friends. And I pray the same for you, inshallah. And very last thing, I want to mention this as well because this is very important how I started. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed the Quran Rahim, He's Rahman and Rahim. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm not saying it, Allah's Quran says it, right? In Surah Al Hijr, uh, ayah number 59 says, Yes, inform my servants that it is I who am forgiving and the merciful. But the very next ayah, what is the very next ayah? And my punishment is the most painful punishment as well. Very lastly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this Quran as a guidance to us. And I will read this last ayah and try to wrap up inshallah. In Surah Al Isra, ayah number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the Hadal Quran, Yahdi Lilati Yahu, for you bash you will move me in the Ladina Yahu in a strong Hati and Allahum Hadar and Tabira. So Quran indeed is telling you, showing you the right way. So whoever you know believes in it or does the right deeds, inshallah, give them glad tidings. But the very next ayah, what does it say? For under the Ladina Lahi, Minuna Bil Afiati, Hatar and Allahum Adab and Lima. And warn those who do not believe in the hereafter that we have prepared for them a great, a very severe punishment. One well, last thing I'm saying that is, inshallah, try to repent as much as possible. Prophet used to repent 70 times or even more within a day. So look at yourselves, how many times you're repenting. This Sayyidul Astaghfar is, there's a Sayyid is in Al-Bukhari 6306, and inshallah we can share this with the group as well. Shaddad bin Aqsadillah Anu says, Prophet Sallallahu told him, Sayyidul Astaghfar, the, you know, the best way you can ask for repentance is this. Allahumma anta rabbi, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are my rabb. La ilaha illa anta, there is no rabb without other than you. Khalaqtani, you created me. Wa ana abduka, I am your servant. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'adika mastata'atu. I am on the promise that I made to you. And inshallah, you read Surah Al-Araf. At the time of creation of Adam alayhi salam, we made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah, you are our rabb. And when you say la ilaha illa Allah, that is also a binding, also a promise. That Allah, I'm on your promise as much as I can. I will become in Shabi Masanatu. I you know ask I come under your protection from uh, secret union from the evil effects of my deeds. Abu Lakabiniamatika Aliya, I look at all my you know ni'mat or all my blessings and I thank you for that. But Abu Lakabidambi and I look at all my sins and I confess them. I know the fuck that leave and no layak to do by that that all that you forgive me because nobody else is going to forgive me. I pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me, forgive all of you, forgive all the Muslims that came before us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make clear our hearts for each other so that we, especially in this non Muslim country, we have strong community, we be together. If a Muslim brother we haven't spoken with, please try to speak to him. Please ask for forgiveness from your family. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of our death give us the kalima la ilaha illallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrect us with shuhada, with salihin, with anbiya. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our mistakes and give us the love of those without any sad love or hasn't any sad way to see that. Wa akhir ta'ana ya alhamdulillahi wa bil alameen.
most of you already know that next Friday, 29th of March, is our fundraising year for our center. So we have purchased the center in Flight North, close to Bunnings. We have already put the report in a couple of years ago, and we have been raising funds since then. So we have come up to halfway through, roughly just over $350,000. We still need around that money, $350,000 Australian dollar. So uh, one thing, brother, uh, we have a GoFund uh, fundraising um, donation, online fundraising. So if you can Google New Center fundraising, it will come up. If you can help us, it will be great. And if you put any money, that promotes the page, that promotes the GoFund things. It goes straight further. So other people see it, and, and they encourage from that, and they donate. Uh, second, for this fundraising, Iftar brother, uh, we have a limited seats. Uh, it will be here. Um, Iftar time next Friday, I've seen roughly around 7.20. So if you can come roughly half an hour uh, before that, it would be great for seating and other arrangements. Otherwise, from the past experience, I've seen everyone wants to come that five or ten minutes uh, before the Iftar. Uh, it becomes too hard. It just becomes too crowded and hard to see and everything. So if we can come a bit early, it will be great. And also we'll do our um, Tarawi prayer here uh, next Friday. At the moment we are praying in um, Taliyala Community Center. So next Friday it will be here. So we have a booking system. There is a ticket system. All those money uh, that will be raised from the ticket will be go towards the purchasing the Musallah. A um, lot of brothers have come forward to help with the cost for the iftar and also the all hires, alhamdulillah. One brother giving us food, other brother giving us other foods, and some brothers are giving money for the tour for the cost for the iftar. So any money you you pay for the ticket will go all all the money will go towards the purchasing of the alhamdulillah. And also when you come, brother, there will be a fundraising uh, moment. So if you can help us, it will be really great. I know we are nearly more than 100 people here. So we, we can only accommodate uh, 60 families. So it's a family fundraising dinner. Uh, there will be kids um, and your other family you can do. So it is roughly 70, 60 to 70 families you can accommodate. If it is a single person, we'll give it more. Um, so if you can uh, purchase the ticket as soon as you can, uh, if you can do by this weekend, it would be great. Then we know how many people we have. And that would help us to organize the picture and foods and other arrangements. Um, and brother, um, it is really hard time for us. We have been trying everything so we can get the money and settle the settle the property. It's only two months left. Property is nearly finishing. Construction has started a uh, long time ago and it's almost done. They will hand over. They have given us the notice to our solicitor. It's only two months left. So we really need really a lot of money. One thing, if you can help us with donation, it will be great. Second, we are also um, requesting for Karzi Hasana, which is a personal loan without any interest. So if you have any spare money in your bank account or anywhere, let's say 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, you are not going to be using for next one to two years. If you can help us giving that, we will pay you back that after the raising, after fundraising, inshallah. So yes, brothers are helping slowly. We can pay you back definitely. Um, if you can believe us, if you can help us, it will be really great. So if you are making your mind for Sadaqai, Sadaqai Zaria and also uh, Karzi Hasana, especially Karzi Hasana, we are not taking any amount uh, below 5,000 for accounting purposes, it becomes too hard. So if anyone is just giving personal loan, um, it has to be at least 5,000 and, and above. But donation, we are accepting any amount for only a dollar to, to above. But uh, thank you very much for your patience. Assalamu alaikum.
أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا أن يحدي الله فلا مذل له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا الفريع ذلك خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون كان الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم في السورة طه له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى ويقول الله عز وجل في سورة بكرة ألف لام م ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين وقال الله تعالى سبحانه وتعالى يقول في القرآن الكريم في سورة الرحمن الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في سورة الأحزاب لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله باليوم الآخر آخرة وذكر الله كثيرا وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم في سورة نور يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتبعوا خطبات الشيطان ومن يتبع خطبات الشيطان فإنه يأمر بالفحشاء والمنكر ولولا قدر الله عليكم ورحمته لا تكا منكم من عهد أبدا ولكن الله يزكي من يشاء والله سميع عليم أما بعد إن أسلك الحديث كتاب الله وحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في الله وقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لبلكم ولسائر المسلمين واستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يقول الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم في سورة إسراء إن هذا القرآن يهدي للذين يأفون ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجلا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما عن أبي مالك أشهدي قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والقرآن حجة لك أو عليك رباع المسلم حدثني شتار بن عوث رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد الاستغفار أن تقول اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على أحدك ووعدك ما استطعت أود بك من شر ما صنعت أبو لك بنعمتك علي وأبو بزنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت رباع مقالي إن الله وملائكة يسلم على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا لسلما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك عميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك عميد مجيد اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أسباجنا وذرياتنا قرة عيون وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم ربنا صف عنا عذاب جهنم اللهم ربنا صف عنا عذاب جهنم اللهم ربنا صف عنا عذاب جهنم اللهم إنا نسلك الفردوس اللهم إنا نسلك الفردوس اللهم إنا نسلك الفردوس اللهم ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار اللهم ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وعز الشرك والمشركين مدمر على الدين وحمي هوزة الإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم احذنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما عافيت وقنا شر ما كديت فإنك تقضي ولا يبقى عليك إنه لا يزل من واليت تبارك ربنا وتعاليت اللهم منزل الكتاب سريع الحساب اهزم الأحزاب اللهم احزمهم وزلزلهم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيشكم لعلكم تذكرون سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأكيد الصلاة
Thank you.